So, uh, yeah, we hit half a million subscribers this week on YouTube, and uh, it's pretty wild. That's a lot of people. Um, you guys have totally changed our lives. And so I wanted to do something pretty special, but I wanted to do it in a more comfortable way because we're not super formal, but we like to edit and make everything nice for you to watch. And um, I basically want to make, for 500,000 subscribers, I want to make the nicest bag I can make, and then we're going to give it away to one of you guys as a thank you because I'm not going to sit here and pretend that, you know, we're doing this all for you. This is our job, and you guys make it just one of the best jobs in the world. Um, I would let my hair down right now. It is down to my back. Surprise. Long-haired, hippie leather worker. I'm not going to do that. But it's going to be a little more informal. It's going to be three or four parts because this is the bag that we're making. Um, I'm going to make a fully lined tote bag. It's going to have a fully lined shoulder strap. I'm actually, I don't do a lot of branding, but I really want to put, like, I'm going to cut our logo out of leather and it's going to be the graphic on the front of the bag um, in a tasteful way. Nothing too crazy. Uh, these, you know how I am. These are the sketches we have. We don't have any patterns or anything and we're just gonna get to it. So let's get started. So this is kind of a bastardized version of our logo. It's a lot skinnier, but I made it really thick so I could actually cut it out of leather. Um, and I don't actually ever think I've talked about any of this stuff. Maybe we'll talk about some of that um, during this series. So this logo, I designed myself. I went to, uh, I went, I have a graphic, a fine art degree with a focus in graphic design from the New England School of Art and Design. And uh, I started Quarter when I was 19 or 20, so I was like a junior in college. And um, I was like not a very good graphic designer, because back then, I mean, that was 2007, 2006, we did, when you get a fine art degree, it's a lot of, it's like three years of formal fine art education. So it's like um, studio classes, oil painting, pastels, drawing, all that kind of stuff. So we didn't really get on a computer until like uh, my junior year. And our first logo just said quarter in a, I think it was Baskerville font. And the O was a ship's wheel because we were in New England. And then um, I didn't really like it. It was a little too busy. I wanted something that was a little bit of an icon that I could just kind of like, because I don't really like branded stuff. So I wanted something that was kind of like pretty to look at, didn't scream brand name. And I came up with this, which is, oddly enough, you know, they say you draw inspiration from all sorts of places. and. I remember I watched the Blair Witch Project, and at the end, there's like, they, uh, they show, it could be teeth, it could be bones, it, but it's meant to be ambiguous. It's like on purpose because it basically, it's so that the viewer imagines it to be the scariest possible thing they could imagine. And uh, with they the logo, that. yeah, that's why, like, they never, they never define what it is. I don't think at least, I've only seen the movie like twice. Yeah. But uh, I had just read about it. I looked. I remember thinking, like, what is that? I looked it up online, and it was, like, ambiguous on purpose. And I don't know how. I was just kind of sketching out, like, I don't fish. People think these are fish hooks a lot. They're actually, it's twofold. It's, they're curved gloving needles. But then it's also a C and an L for quarter leather. And I was just like, yeah, that works. So... Did it, got the trademark for it, and then I think they put it into, they put like two cross fishing hooks into a clip art thing. So now it's really hard to defend our trademark, <laughs> but uh, that's okay, it's fine. Um, and so that's how our, our logo kind of came to be. I got it tattooed on me. Kaylina took me for my 30th birthday. It was our 10 year anniversary of the company. And it was my first tattoo. And I like it, I don't, you know, we stamp it in all of our, um, in all of our production stuff, but you know, most of the time when I'm doing videos here, I don't really stamp it or anything because it's just a project I'm making with you guys. I'm, t I'm teaching you guys, or we're experimenting together on film. You guys are watching, and it doesn't really feel as much like a quarter piece. It feels like a, you know, just a piece I'm making with friends, that kind of thing, just messing around. Um, for this one, I'm just gonna go all out. I, I like, I like big branding if it's done right. So I'm gonna do this all monochromatic. Let the stitching do a lot of the work as far as um, separating it from the body of the bag. And hopefully it comes out looking good. So yeah, so I guess uh, you can see kind of the ambiguity of, could be fishing hooks, because we live in New England. It could be sewing needles, you know, that's it. And then people ask where the word quarter comes from. It's actually not my name. I probably have said this on film before, but um, it's from a John Mayer lyric. I'm a big John Mayer fan. Uh, my screen name 
it was quarter life crisis when I was like 12. And when I got older, I was like, oh, it's a bit dramatic. So I was going on fashion forums and I just shortened it to quarter. I started making wallets and people started calling them quarter wallets because it was my screen name. And I kind of just didn't want to name a brand. And again, I was in design school. It's like, you know, the whole Kleenex thing. It's a not a really word, so it's perfectly brandable. Not that we have like a, we're not really one of those businesses that are like, I have to stick with my brand identity. We don't really have one. We just make leather stuff. But um, yeah, so that's how this logo came about. That's how my, how I called it quarter leather, just kind of all stuck. And so what I'm doing now is I'm gonna cut this out of leather, sand it down all nice, make it really smooth. And then this is gonna get stitched to the front of the bag, which, hey, fingers crossed, you know? I've never done that before. I've made, if you follow us on Instagram, which we're actually gonna give this away on Instagram, and I already screwed it up, so we gotta do it again. Damn it. <laughs> okay, never mind. We're back and things are fine. I just moved the pattern a little bit and got it back in shape. Um, I totally lost my train of thought. But yeah, so I figured this video series, I just kinda wanna make something that I wanna make. And I wanna try to make the nicest bag. I've been on a bag kick lately. If you follow us on Instagram, that's what I was saying. So we're actually going to do the giveaway on Instagram um, once the bag is done, which will be probably two or three more videos. But you can follow us on Instagram. We're just at Quarter Leather. I'll put a link in the description. And we'll make a post when all this is done. It's just easier that way for... There's like an app that'll draw a winner from the comments. So we'll just do it that way. Anyone can sign up for an Instagram account and no purchase necessary. It's easier to stay legal and, all, and fair and all that. And uh, I think we can do an international too. It doesn't matter where you are, we'll ship it to you. So there we go, so now I have to cut that out. And uh, once that's done, then we'll cut out the main body of the bag. This is the drawing that I have. Um, basically what I like to do is I sketch it out, and then I just figure out all the measurements. This is, uh, the body's gonna kinda, it's gonna be one piece body that wraps around and then we'll do gussets that kinda flare out. And the logo will be in the middle of the front panel, we'll do some corner reinforcements on the bottom to balance out the rivets of the handle on the top, I am going to do a, a crossbody strap, so these will be like short handles, and then a big nice lined crossbody strap. The whole thing is going to be lined on the inside with Herman Oak Veg. This is some sort of brown leather. <laughs> we, um, we have a lot of leather right now in the shop, and I am losing track of what everything is, so if it doesn't have a mark on it, I'm not really sure what it is. Um, but the inside will be all Herman Oak Natural Veg that I'm going to tan in oil, and it's all going to look super nice. So I'm glad we got a little of the detail in this logo. Uh, we'll get, we'll get to cutting it out now. Look at that. That's looking pretty good. I'm surprised that I actually was able to get all the cuts. So what I did is I just used hole punches for these little holes here. And then I wrapped a little bit of sandpaper around. I don't, I think this was for some sort of like so, uh, soldering kit. Uh, it's like a plastic tool to touch electrical parts, but I just have it in the shop. I wrap um, a little bit of sandpaper around it when I want to get into really tight spots. It's really, really good for that. So <clears throat> a little tip, I have no idea where you buy those but they work if you can find one. So I'm just gonna sand this a little bit. I am gonna, um, I think I'm gonna leave the edges cut flat. I'm not gonna bevel them because I want like a nice sharp transition because it's all gonna be monochromatic. The shadows will play a little bit nicer with a straight cut. Um, and when I burnish, I'll kind of just burnish and roll over the edges a little bit and I'll take off the super sharp edge with some 600 grit sandpaper. But I'm probably not going to bevel them. And I'll save the boring, That's this is going to take me like a half hour or so to get this all right, all good. Um, so I'll save that, but when we come back, um, we'll have this all burnished and we'll cut out our body piece and get this stitched to the body piece before we put our lining in. Alright, and it's the next day. Um, I got all this stuff burnished last night. Uh, this took a long time <laughs> because there's so many curves, but it came out nice. So it should be nice on the front of the bag. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to get our, some of our pieces made. 
And we're gonna do a set of rolled handles. Now you guys have seen, we have a video going through the whole process. So I didn't wanna do all of it all over again. The difference that I wanted to mention is I'm using a nylon core here. Now usually I use a leather core, which looks like this. Oh, something's gonna fall. No, we're good. Um, you can see it's not suit as thick. I wanted a little bit of a thicker handle because we are gonna be doing a shoulder strap on this bag as well. So this is mostly for like hanging the bag or just carrying it briefly. You're probably not gonna be carrying it like this a lot. And I find with the nylon, um, I just like the size of it better. It gets a little bulky when you use leather that thick. So nylon it is. Um, the other thing I've started to do is I started making these templates for the ends of my rolled handles. I have a few different ones. This is the one we're going to use. Um, maybe we'll release them in a pattern pack at some point. Just little bits and bobs. Like I have this one too. This is for the D-ring attachments on the sides. So you'll see us using those throughout the process of this bag. But for now, we got to get this handle looking like this handle. And the first step is we glue everything together. We put our core in. We put our liner in. And this, you're not going to really see this, but I like to do it because every time, you know, when you have a bag like this, and you move the handle, if this is raw in here, it just kind of looks a little unfinished and this also locks in our core so there's gonna be no sliding around. So, all we have to do now, it almost feels like a cooking show, like I'm pulling it out from the oven already having some of it done, but um, I'm gonna apply a coat of glue onto um, all this stuff and we have to roll it up. I think another thing is you've always seen us use Weldwood. Um, we're gonna switch, we, I use barge a lot too, um, but honestly, we just go through so much glue that they sell Weldwood at the local hardware store. It's, they changed the formula in like the last, they went from the glass bottles to these and now the glue kind of is not very sticky. So I think we're going to permanently switch to like either Masters or, or Barge, um, with a glue pot as much as I usually just grab these cause I'm lazy. Um, that seems to be the right move to make right now. So, um, I like this style because I know to glue up to here, um, nothing, you don't want any glue past this, but you can have as much glue as you want inside because you're not going to be able to see it. And uh, then we'll get this rolled up and stitched. And one of my newer designs that I've been doing is I've been putting little rivets in. I kind of flare this up and rivet it and then shape it. Um, so that's what we're going to do on this one as well. And so now once the glue, because we're working with this new stuff, it like, you can't let it dry. It's very weird after 15 years of using the same glue, but, um, so now we're just going to roll it up and I like to start in the middle and work my way down. Um, but I, I get to the end fairly quickly cause I want those ends to match up now that I'm using that little template thing. I used to kind of just do this all willy nilly and didn't really matter, but now it kind of does, which is double-edged sword. It's good cause it ends up with a much more accurate product or accurate piece in the end but it's a little bit more stressful because you do need things to line up we're not going to do all the shaping on the sander so we'll get that pretty stuck down and then grab our bone folder here and the thing about these is they look very accurate um, but the reality is when you're making them they're pretty fun and they're really simple I think because all we're doing is we're just using the guide of that core right and don't worry if you go off a little bit um you know you might you might end up like making a mark right there it's all gonna because we're bending it that's gonna bend away we're not cutting into leather we're not really tooling it that's once we get this into shape and it's molded like this you're not gonna see any of this so when you go in you know have fun with it don't really worry about being super accurate um because it all works out once you bend everything get everything sewn up and bent so I like to go in on one side first and really press down because this is also going to be our stitch line. We're going to stitch right in here and we'll get it on one side first and then we'll flip it over and we'll get it on the other side, which you might have to kind of bend depending on the leather that you're using. And this is a five ounce leather, so it's a little bit thick, but it's very soft. So what that's going to end up giving us is a really sturdy handle that's very comfortable to hold. There's not gonna be much break-in period with this specific leather in handle form. And you can see, once you get to the part where you have like the liner skived in, 
And you can use a thinner leather. I just used a three ounce veg tan that I kind of skived down a little bit, but it is pretty hard to do. Um, don't be afraid to muscle it though. So you're not gonna break the leather. And if you do break the leather, you know you're not using leather you should be using. So there we go. And we'll flip it over and do one more here. And now we're ready to punch. So to do the rivet on this piece, and really on anything, if you want to do the look where you have a rivet running into a stitch line, the main thing to remember is you want to punch your hole. I don't know if you can see this, but um, you want to punch your hole for the rivet before you sew. So I'm going to punch a hole there and a hole here. And this is basically, you're, you're just making a wider stitch hole for the, for the initial stitching. And then what's going to happen is we're going to put our rivet in after. So not only is it going to lock in this seam here, it's also going to lock in the stitch line. It's not really a back stitch, but like you might as well add as much strength as you can. For thread, I am using two weights of thread, weights of thread, two sizes of thread, two thicknesses of thread on this project. I'm using a thicker thread for the handle um, because that's going to give us a, I think it looks a little bit better with such a chunky piece but B, it's gonna give us a little more durability. The thicker the thread, the more strands it has, and this is a contact point. So, you know, as someone's holding this, if over 10 or 15 years this starts to fray, we're still gonna have that strength of there's plenty of thread. Um, and then I'm gonna step down a size to do all of the rest of the bag. So I'm just gonna grab some thread, wax it up, and stitch it up. Okay, so once we have our stitching in, <clears throat> you can see we're getting our handle shaped. And you can see here, it's not perfect. I, I had a little, a few little marks that went off, but that's okay. That's all going to go away when we finish this handle up. So I have these teeny tiny pop rivets here that I'm not good at holding because my hands are big and clunky, but we're going to try to get those popped in. There we go. And now we're going to go over to the Little Wonder and we're going to set them. So now you have a little bit of a confidence test coming up. Um, I've set my dividers to be the seam allowance that I want. And I'm gonna run there down, run them down here to make where I'm gonna cut. And then what I like to do is grab one of these guys and just create a little bit of a curve like that and like this. And I'm gonna go a little bit above where I want it to go so I can sand it down later. And we're gonna grab, oh, I gotta grab a fresh blade. All right, fresh blade, steady hand as best you can. And I'm not gonna try to cut all the way through in one pass. I'm gonna do a couple passes, following my line very slowly. Keep your fingers out of the way, because without them you can't do leather work, so you don't wanna lose them. Good one, Dad. Yeah, thanks. I guarantee you there's like a one-handed person out there that kills it with leather work too. So, sorry, that was a bit ableist. Um, and we're just gonna go another one. And towards the ends here, you might have to stick your blade in and kind of push away from you. And if you're not used to doing this kind of cut, you might want to practice first. Because it is something that kind of is a, a learned skill. There we go. And so it looks a little rough, but that's okay. We're going to bring this over to the sander. And I'm going to get this sanded down and ready to burnish.
but you can see I kind of shaped everything with the sander. And now I'm just going to burnish or uh, edge this. And I said this in the last video we made about this. This is a contact point. So you want to get these really nice and silky smooth because it's what the person who's using it is going to be holding. So what I like to do is sand down from like 300 grit to like 600 before you burnish. Um, you don't have to spend a ton of time on it, but you know, just make sure you're really getting in there. And we'll throw a little bit of uh, wax on this as well once we're done. Make it really nice and smooth and it feels really good to hold on to while you're carrying it. So that's our 300, and then this is 600, and 600 almost starts to burnish on its own. And you could, you know, you could go crazy with this. You go up to 1,000, 2,000, that pretty much starts to glass it up without any gum drag or anything. And what I like to do is you do have to have like all the edges finished because we're gonna stick it like that. But I focus on this first, like the main handle part, and then I go through and trim everything up and get that finished after. And the cool thing about doing it with the two colors is you get where the skive is, you get that like cool second layer in there. I really like that little detail. So we have everything nicely sanded and we sand it down into here too. So now all that's left is take a little gum drag and get this burnished up. And then I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna tie this up. You don't really need to do this whole like tying thing, but we're not gonna install these for a couple days. So I like to do it because then it just gets you the shape, it just makes it a little bit easier. But it's not totally necessary. You can just make these and install them straight onto a bag. And this leather burnishes really nicely, so this is always a, tr a nice treat to do. And if it's not slicking as much as you'd like it to, this is. But if it's not, what I like to do, I don't use any really fancy burnishing tools. I just take my tool handles and you can kind of slick everything down. Use it, like get it a little bit more damp than you normally would with gum drag, and slick all those fibers down. And then by the time you're done with this, it'll be dry enough to come back with your canvas and really get that shine. There we go. That's nice and shiny there. And that's one of the things I like about using the nylon core is that it's, there's less of a break-in period. When you use leather, it's it's more comfortable in the long run because it's a leather core. So you're like your grip basically molds in like a wallet with with credit cards. But with the nylon core, it's just really nice and soft and comfortable from the beginning. It doesn't break in as much because it's nylon, so it's not going to get those indentations. But it's really comfortable and stays shape, keeps its shape really nice long term. So I think this is going to be just perfect for this bag. Um, and then I'm going to go down because we're going to basically, we're going to stitch these onto the bag partially, but we're also going to rivet them. Um, these edges need to be finished as well before we install them. I might end up actually needing to trim them down a little bit too, but there's like an inch of trim allowance kind of in the bottom of these built into that little pattern I made. So we should be good to go. And these are like a little bit tedious. You can kind of go as crazy as you want with them. Just remember that like at the end of the day, they're gonna be mounted like this. So you're not really gonna see anything from like here in is gonna be just a layer inside the bag. So you don't, you don't need to go too, too crazy. But I do like to take the time to kind of mold this with the sandpaper and get it just looking nice. You're already in there, you might as well do it. So you can see now that we are assembling sort of what I would call our assets that we're going to attach to the bag. Here's our design. We're going to attach handles. We're going to attach our logo in the front. Now it's time to start cutting out the body of the bag. You can see my very technical drawings. Um, I'm going to cut out a piece of this first. It's going to be a one piece bag on the wraparound and then it'll have sort of angled gussets on the sides. So the step that we need to do next is we need to cut out the main piece, attach the logo to it, then line it and do all that kind of stuff. Here's the main body of our bag I just cut out. Look how crazy this is gonna look. 
so good. Um, and so I want the front of this bag with the design, I want it to kind of angle down with the logo. And we're gonna add four inches on either side of this, so it's not gonna be this small. But what I've done is I have made this taper, just marked it out in Sharpie. And we're gonna cut that out and then we're gonna go on a bit of a marathon to Skive. Because remember, we are lining this entire thing in natural veg tan from Herman Oak. So this is about four or five ounces. And the veg tan is about two, three. So that'll give us a nice, um, like an eight ounce body, which is nice, but it's a little thick for the edges. So we can skive all this down and give ourselves, make it a little easier on ourselves to get all of our seams sewn when it comes time to punch through all this leather. So moving right into the skiving part, what I like to do is I'm gonna take my dividers here and I'm gonna adjust them to a half inch. That's how big I want the skive to be. Now I don't have a bell skiver and people ask, you know, why don't you get machines and stuff? I don't know how to use a sewing machine. I've used one a couple times, but don't really, we own one that we use as a plant stand. We don't have a functioning one in the shop. It's kind of the same with skiving. Like I really like skiving by hand. Um, and with bell skivers, I've only used one a couple times and I like them. Don't get me wrong for production work. They make sense. But when you're like us, you make like maybe a couple bags a month. And when you're doing like really little stuff, I like being able to kind of fine tune how deep my skive is, where it, where it's located. Um, when you're doing smaller work, like wallets and stuff. So that's why I do it like this. Um, Let's see how fast we can get through skiving this whole thing. So Weaver sells three sizes of skiving knife. We're definitely gonna go with the big boy on this one. What I've done on the big one is I've actually sanded down the heel. I don't know if this is the heel, but I've sanded down the handle to create kind of a heel to let me get a little bit lower to the ground. The other two doesn't seem to be a big of a problem, but the big one I like to, I don't know if it's because of the blade size or whatever. It just made it a lot nicer to use by sanding that down. So a quick strope. This is just Jewelers Rouge. And I have started, I used to, I used to do this and then a bunch of you in the comments said, go one way it helps and it really does help. So thank you for that because I'm able to get this thing a lot sharper now. And I never would have thought that just going one direction would do that. We should be good there. So our skiving's all done. I went ahead, I think I'm gonna put the patch on this side because I like, oh no, this side. I like all of the marks on it. Um, I went and used my, I have two sets of calipers. This one usually stays the same. This is my stitching guide, but I need an inner line too. So this is a uh, inch and a quarter. And what we're gonna end up doing is putting a liner on the inside and our handles are gonna attach Stitch to this bottom line, have two rivets in here, and then this is gonna be, this. the top is gonna to be stitched. So, then we can put our logo in. And I can't say I've ever done anything like this before, so it's gonna be interesting. We have to remember that with our pattern, our bottom curve starts at the straight part here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay this out, and this is kind of how I centered this. So I centered it on the piece, but to try to figure out where to put it up and down, I know I'm gonna be able to see maybe an inch further than this ruler, right? So it's gonna be a little bit further down like that. Now when you center stuff, for something to look centered from far away, it actually needs to be a little higher. So like when you're matting a print, oftentimes you'll, when you cut the mat, the top seam will be like a quarter inch shorter than the bottom seam, which will be a quarter inch bigger. So the mat will sit a little bit higher by the numbers, but visually it looks centered. If you were to perfectly center it, it would look too low. So I'm okay with this being a little bit too high. The only thing I'm a little bit worried about is 
that the bottom of this bag is going to show a little too much and I don't really want it looking like that. You know, so I'm kind of thinking, do I move it down a little tiny bit? I think that's right about where we're going to put it. So I'm not going to be gluing this. I'm going to be using our basing tape because, you know, we can move it around a bit. Um, if we put it down and we don't like where it's at, we're just going to use kind of a bunch um, to hold it down. And then we'll stick it in and uh, punch it. Actually, before I peel this tape off though, I want to lay my stitch line because I don't want to do it once it's taped to the bag. Now that all that's left is I'm going to mark out all these stitches before I go and punch them so I can make sure everything is spaced the way I like it to be. And we're going to actually leave it in a bit of a cliffhanger. Um, I've always wanted to do kind of a bag series that's more of a vlog type thing where we just kind of make as much as we can for a week and we put the video out and then the next week we just keep making. And I figured half a million subscribers, beautiful bag we're going to give away, why not give it a go? So um, I would say, we want to say, me and Kayleen want to say thank you for 500,000 subscribers, that's, that's no joke, that's a lot of people. Um, when I was, I remember when I was 19, made my first wallet uh, because there wasn't anybody in the United States selling a uh, bifold wallet made out of natural veg tan leather on the internet, if you can believe that. Now, now there's such a big community, but I had to make my own. And uh, it's really heartwarming to be even just a small part of that, of keeping this craft alive, advancing this, you know, leather craft the scene has grown so much and it just warms our hearts. And um, to have a little bit of a part in that is just feels really special to us. Um, so I'm going to keep punching this out. I'm going to get this all sewn up. We'll, we'll get a little reveal in the next video. But if you want a sneak peek, we're going to give this bag away on Instagram. I don't think I've ever even mentioned our Instagram account in four years making videos. I'm not very good at the whole promoting yourself thing. But um, our Instagram is at Quarter Leather. I'll put a link on the screen, link in the description. And give us a follow over there if you want to enter to win this bag, but also I'm posting every day all the projects we make in the shop. And uh, we'd love to connect with you on there. And um, last but not least, I had one more thing. I don't remember what it was. Well, can't be that important. Um, thank you guys so much. This is the important part. Thank you guys so much for watching this and every one of our videos. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.